Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Tomorrow, today, we are doing the Ortega's third chapter, Conditions for Accepting the Doctrine of the Myasips. So, this chapter will focus on to understand the theory of myasms in its depth and scope, one must first assimilate Hanimanin's medical philosophy, especially the concept of health, sickness, and cure. So, if you want to understand completely in depth the theory of myasms, you must first understand what is the concept of health, sickness, and cure. One must understand the significance of Natura Medicatis Morborum and know precisely in what the true similarity consists of. And the mercurius patient who turns out to be calcare. So let us see these three points, what Ortega has to say. In order to understand the myasmic doctrine of Dr. Henneman, we must have a complete knowledge of the Hennemanian homeopathic philosophy. So if you want to understand the myasms, the myasmatic doctrine, you have to have in depth the knowledge of the Hennemanian homeopathic philosophy. So the first point is that you must have the knowledge of the health, concept of health, sickness, and cure, and which is set forth in, the, in this philosophy as processes occurring on the dynamic plane. So health, sickness, and cure, all of it, they are will they, they act on the dynamic plane. Health is equanimity of the human being, illness is disequilibrium of the vital force, cure is returned to harmony with oneself and the whole world. So health is an equanimity of the human being. That is what? Equanimity meaning resonance, or it goes. All the physiological processes are in harmony with each other, or they are in equanimity with each other, or they are in peace with each other. And illness is nothing but a disequilibrium of the vital force. So in health, you are getting equilibrium. In disease condition, you are getting disequilibrium. In health, you are getting harmony. In disease condition, you are getting disharmony. And cure is returned to the harmony with one self and the whole world. So what is cure? In nothing but the return of the original state of original state of health of the patient. The definition of health given by the World Health Organization encompasses the thinking of the great medical thinkers, especially Hanneman and his great disciples, Kent and Higino G. Paris. Health as an existential state, a, a eurythmy, harmony with the whole, and equilibrium both organic and psychological. So, the definition of the World Health Organization is there, which includes all the factors or all the, the of all the, all the important points given by Dr. Hanneman, Kent, and Higinoji Paris. They state that health is an existential state or an state of eurythmy or harmony of the whole organism. So, when the whole organism is in harmony with all the physiological processes going on in the body. Health is there, which is an which which is an existential state, and it is both an equilibrium, both on the mental level as well as on the on the physical level as well as on the psychological level. So mind and body go hand to hand. This concept should be profoundly assimilated by any student of empathy and should always be at the forefront of his attention. So this concept of health, sickness, cure, recovery, all goes on the dynamic plane. All, all have to do with equilibrium, disequilibrium, and so forth. Then only, once a student understands this, then only he'll be able to assimilate it better. By inference, sickness is another existential state. Again, sickness, just like health, it exists. So it is an existential state. This state, which is called sickness, brings about an increased effort of the natural healing power to restore normality. So whenever sickness is there, the inner capacity of the organism is there, which will help to heal the, heal its own power and to restore normality. So the body will try to heal its to heal the symptoms on its own and restore the health or the normality. The symptoms being produced in this process as phenomena by which the healing power endeavors to restore health. So whatever symptoms are produced, it is because of the healing power is there, which will help to restore the health. So whatever symptoms are produced in a disease condition, the body's inherent capacity will try to take away these symptoms and restore health. Second point of the point B, in all medical reasoning, one must bear in mind the natura medicatrix moporium or the vis medicatrix nature. So we must bear also in mind that the, that is the vis medicatrix nature or natura medicatrix moporium, nothing but a Latin term given by 
hypocrites. In other words, it is a healing power which sustains the created being in correcting and rectifying itself. So the wig's metacatching nature is nothing but the inherent power of the individual to heal itself. Everything is accomplished by the healing power of nature as, as has been recognized by all masters of medical thought since Hippocrates. So everything when goes along with nature, it will, it will heal faster. You must go along, you must go in the flow of nature and not against it. All this was recognized in medical thoughts since the time of Hippocrates. Henneman refers especially to the healing power in the organon, paragraphs 10 to 13. So in this paragraph, it gives you the introduction of the definition of the vital force. It states, the material organism without vital force is incapable of feeling, of acting, of con conversing itself. Every sensation is born. All the vital functions are performed by means of the vital principle that animates him in health as well as in the disease. So the, whenever the material organism has the vital force, it is alive as a result of which the, the individual is capable of acting, feeling, and, and producing different sensations, as a result of which the health will be maintained, and even when it gets disturbed, the disease will be maintained. So without life vital force, the individual cannot survive, the individual gets dead, the vital force gives life to the individual. Therese gives a magistral summary of this concept in the following form. Illness is but a manner of being an adjective of the substantive man. So it is nothing but illness is nothing but an adjective of the substan substantive man. Life, life like health and sickness can best be understood on the dynamic level. So as you all know, life also is a dynamic process. Health also is a dynamic process. Disease also is a dynamic process. Sickness is also a dynamic process and even cure is a dynamic process. So all of them are dynamic processes and they have to, and they are in they, they have to resonate with each other or they have to balance each other. If the balance is disturbed, then the disease will set in. One must be also convinced on the same level the successful effort of the Vicks medical nature to return to the equilibrium and equanimity which constitute health. So not only this, but also there is a Vicks medicatrix nature or the inherent power of the individual to heal oneself and to bring about equilibrium which will constitute health. So this also has to be taken into consideration. And the C point, the third point, one must have a complete understanding to the maximum. That is the true meaning of the simulum. So this is also very important. You must know what do you mean by the simulum or what is the true meaning of the simulum. One must never be content with the claim that homeopathy operates through a childish or apparent concordance. So you must never be satisfied that homeopathy is a childish play and it is based on the symptom similarity or the apparent concordance or the apparent similarity. The concordance is between fairly large number of symptoms of the sick person and the most correct ones produced by the medicines. The concordance or the similarity is what? Between the symptoms of the sick person. So you're trying to match the symptoms of the sick person into the symptoms which are most characteristic produced by the medicine on a, on a, on, a, on the level of similarity or, the, or on the level of concordance. The two similarities found in the simulum must encompass a maximum analogy between the medicine and the sickness. So the two similarity must have a maximum resemblance or maximum analogy between the medicine and the sickness. That means whatever symptoms you are taking, you have to take maximum number of symptoms. The whole potential of the therapeutic element must be matched with the expression or the state of existence of our patient, which is at all the sickness. So the whole potential of therapeutic element must be matched with the present state of existence of the patient. That means what? Whatever symptoms the patient has at present or at that state at the point in time. Thus, the true homeopathic prescription cannot be based on one or several similarities, but only on the maximum similarity. So naturally, if you want to have a true homeopathic similarity or a true homeopathic prescription, you cannot base it only on one or two or on a few similarities here and there, but you have to match it on a maximum similarity. Thus, the analogy should be as complete as possible. So the similarity should be as complete as possible, both on the mental level as well as on the physical level. So the maximum number of half symptoms have to be taken. You cannot take one, two, or only a few symptoms here and there. So the whole individual has to be taken into, into consideration as a whole. Now let us give a small clinical example. 
A patient came to us accompanying, complaining of pain in the right hypochondria, gastric acidity, thin or lumpy stools, abundant salivation, and copious expectoration. So these are the expressions of the patient at the point in time. Sometimes the pain appeared in the left hypochondria or the elliptical region and were described with the pain of ache, which became worse at night. Here, the irritation, especially at night, frequent stools with ineffectual urging, he was easily irritated, impatient, and nervous. So out here, you are seeing you have got symptoms on the mental level as well as on the physical level also. All of this reminds us of the Merck solibus pattern. So if you go to see all the symptoms which are mentioned out here, are nothing but the characteristic symptoms of Merck Sol. We can be sure that this is his similimum and that if we administer it, we will almost certainly elevate the patients partially or totally. So when we are sure that Merck Sol is the correct remedy or to the similimum, we can definitely we can elevate the symptoms either partially or totally. If we investigate our patient more exhaustively, we will find some other small details. So Ortega says that if we still integrate the patient and still go into more depth of the patient, we'll, we'll find some more finer details. What are those finer details? We know that he is timid, fearful in some circumstances, travels by bus, makes him nervous and airplane even more. By further questioning, he's anxious, anxiety is mixed with fear. So this is the finer, more details on the mental level which we are getting. In addition to this, Evident timidity, we discover that his reserve takes offense easily, feels resentment, and he feels worse in wet weather with pricking sensation in the extremities. He is somewhat unyielding. He was raised in a relatively austere environment by a rigid father and strict grandparents. So, this is also something about his life situation. So, we discover by strict adherence to Hanimanian orthodoxy that the patient has a dominant soric condition with a touch of syphilis. So, what are the what is the miasmatic load behind it? It is the dominant soric miasm plus a touch of the syphilitic miasm also. The true totality of the symptoms demands calcarea carb, the true similimum, and not mercurius as we would have first appeared. So if we go into the depth and if we find out more of the symptoms, we find out that now Merxol is not the remedy, but calcarea carb will fit in the, as the true totality on a very maximum level. Repertize the symptoms in the Mater Medica confirms this conclusion. So even if you repertize the case, you will find out that Calcarea Cup will be the indicated remedy and not Merxol. So the maximum similarity has to be there. Calcarea as a functional medicine covers up the totality of the patient's symptoms. It will not immediately elevate the symptoms which afflict him, but will also be the most appropriate stimulus for the human being's reaction, somatic and mental, guiding him towards a true homeostasis. So he says that if you take the true similimum and if you take the reaction of the patients on the mental level, the physical level, then a true homeostasis or true equilibrium will be obtained soon. Let us note that prescribing calcarea, we did not use only the two total symptoms, but we established a suitable hierarchy for each of the pathological manifestations. The result occur immediately and the correct order and the direction. So when you go into the depth, when you take the, the when you find the true similar on the maximum similarity and not only on one, two or few symptoms here and there, but we go into the depth of the patient, see the life situation of the patient, the reaction, and then we find out the true similarity, then the reaction or the result will be immediate in the correct order and the correct direction. This is what the most inward to the outward from the most severe to the least. It not only acts and rectifies the patient's sensation, but even his physical structure. So that's all in this chapter. The fourth chapter will be coming, will be coming up next. Please, please stay tuned for more. Thank you.